Well, hello, and welcome to the June 22nd meeting of the Rotary Club of Columbus. Now, ain't technology grand. We are having technical difficulties today, and so we had to start a little bit late, and I apologize, but we will get, we will get through this, won't we, Ryan? It's great to see all of you here. For those of you watching online, a warm welcome to you as well. And so now would you please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. And now I would like to ask Carmen Overton to bring us today's invocation in accordance with her faith tradition. Carmen. Thank you, President Lori. One of the projects that I've gotten to do this year in my role at Clement Arts is to create a prayer guide for churches and local volunteers to use to help remember the different aspects of child welfare and vulnerable children in our community. This month's focus is vulnerable teens, and I thought because of this role, the club's role in doing so many projects that care for vulnerable teens that I would lead us in that prayer. Please pray with me. God, who created us, all of us, in your image, may we recognize that teens who need homes have unique needs and challenges that include fewer homes available to them and complications that come with aging out of the system. Without intervention from caring people, we know many of these teens will face bleak futures. So Lord, we pray that vulnerable teens will find friends and encounter compassionate and encouraging teachers in school. May more mentors commit to being consistent sources of positive influence to help teens see what they can become as an adult. And as community leaders and Rotarians, may we ensure that every youth that ages out of the foster care system and all at-risk teens have the skills necessary to survive and thrive as an adult. May it be so with your help, amen. And please remember the cans. Thank you. And now it's my pleasure to call on Aileen Lassiter to enter. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We have the newscast. I, now Austin. I know. I forgot. <laughs> now Austin Lyle will bring us today's news. So Austin and Aileen panicked. <laughs> you wouldn't know I'm her only child. <laughs> so good afternoon, everyone. Here is a look at your headlines. <laughs> There's a potential gas tax pause. With gas prices and inflation rising, President Biden will urge members of Congress to implement a federal gas tax holiday for three months. 18 cents of each gallon of gasoline and 24 cents of each gallon of diesel sold is taxed to the federal government and earmarked for the Highway Trust Fund. Gun safety legislation. In the wake of the Uvalde and Buffalo shootings, the Senate made progress yesterday on gun safety legislation. The proposed bipartisan bill includes money for school safety, mental health, and incentives for states to include juvenile records and background checks for younger gun owners. Local election runoff results. Yesterday, the results of the primary runoffs were decided. Joanne Kogel was announced as the winner for the city, seat oh, city council seat in District 7, while Chris West won the seat for the U.S. House Representatives in District 2. The Dow Jones was up 32 points at noon today. Near weather forecast is a very hot and sunny day with a high of 102 and a low of 75. Thank you. Now it's my pleasure to ask Aileen Lassiter to please come up and introduce today's visiting Rotarians and guests. I almost hurt myself running up here. I didn't know. <laughs> so we have quite a few visitors today, so bear with me. Um, we have Anthony Randall is a very proud papa. His daughter, Aria Randall, is here. And let me just take a moment to tell you she's a 2022 grad from uh, CHS, All-American, All-State wrestler, team captain, She's also um, going to the U.S. Military Academy in West Point in three days. All right. So I, I'd love to give her a round of applause, y'all. <laughs> Way to represent. <laughs> Michael Tillier has his guest, Steve Morris, if you'll raise your hand so you can be acknowledged. Thank you. Ron Williams has Nancy Marino as his guest today. Ron Chopa has his son, John Chopa. 
And Rodney Close has brought Caitlin Malone, the new director of development for the Boys and Girls Club. Howard Jefferson has his son, Nolan Jefferson, with him today. And Ryan Clements has brought Alexa Clements, his daughter. Alexa, great, thank you. If you'll all give them a warm rotary welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Aileen. And now it's my pleasure to call on Michael Tollier to please introduce this week's Colonel Ralph Puckett, Jr. Soldier of the Week. Thank you, President Laurie. It is my privilege and pleasure to introduce you to this week's Colonel Ralph Puckett, Soldier of the Week, Sergeant, uh, Staff Sergeant James Daly. Um, Sergeant Daly is an 11B infantryman who serves in the operations NOC at the 198th Infantry Brigade at Fort Benning. Um, he served in many leadership roles um, in, to include um, platoon sergeant, weapon squad leader, drill sergeant, and U.S. Army recruiter. He has two combat deployments, one in support of Operation Iraqi Freedom and one in support of Operation Enduring Freedom. He has um, attended numerous military schools and courses um, to include the Senior Leader Course, the U.S. Army Drill Sergeant Academy, the U.S. Army Recruiter School, and the Combatives Master Training Course. And among his awards and decorations is the Army Commendation Medal with five oak leaf clusters, um, the Army Achievement Medal, and the Valer Valerius Unit Award. Um, and so um, we uh, congratulate him on, um, on those recognitions. Talked a little bit about his family. Um, he is um, originally from South Korea. He joined the Army in December of 2003, where he attended one station unit training at Fort Benning. He's married with two children. He's looking forward to retirement in 18 months, um, hoping to move back to Massachusetts to be with family and friends as he still continues to decide what he wants to be when he grows up. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> Sergeant Daly, we have a few things for you here to commemorate your time here with the Rotary Club. Um, the first is a certificate for your wall and a challenge coin for your pocket. We know you're pretty sure what to do with that. Uh, we also have for you a passport to the arts, which um, we hope you'll have an opportunity to use with your family while you're um, still here in, in Columbus. Um, this includes complimentary admission to um, activities and performances at the River Center, the Columbus Symphony Orchestra, the National Infantry Museum, um, the highly touted Columbus State Theater Department, had to throw that in there, um, as well as the Springer, so we hope you will enjoy those. And finally, we have um, for each of our uh, Colonel Ralph Puckett Soldiers of the Week, um, the book Words of, for Warriors, written by Colonel Puckett. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, this one is inscribed and given by Rotarian Ed Edgar Chancellor in memory of his father, Major General Edgar Chancellor Jr., who served during World War II with the 448th um, Bombardment Group in the Army Air Force. We hope you'll enjoy that as well. Thank you so much for being with us today and all you do for our country. Thank you. Would you like to say a word or two? Uh, yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll say something. Good afternoon. <laughs> um, I'd like to first thank the Rotary Club for uh, honoring uh, members such of the military, such as myself. Um, but also, I'd like to uh, just recognize uh, all the uh, past veterans, law enforcement, first responders here in the crowd or watching, uh, and just pay them respect as well. Thank you. Um, you know, I, uh, I did some research prior to coming here. Um, just about the Rotary Club, I had heard of it. Um, just wanted to look at what exactly I was getting myself into as far as uh, who, I, wh what kind of uh, organization I was going to attend. And um, after reading about all the uh, service and uh, giving back to the community that this organization does, uh, it reminded me of my deployment in 2016, um, or excuse me, 2010, uh, to Afghanistan. Um, we were doing a patrol through one of the local villages that uh, we frequented a lot. And um, at the time, I had just my one daughter. She was about six years old at the time. Um, but there's a little creek that runs right down the middle of that village. and. Um, was observing some of the little kids that were playing in that area. Um, they were playing in the water, as most kids will do when there's water nearby. 
Um, but these little kids about my daughter's age, uh, I realized the water that they were playing in was the, the wastewater, you know, of the, of the village. Um, to include, you know, human waste. Sorry, hope everyone already ate. Um, and, you know, it really affected me at the time because it reminded me of my own daughter and, uh, you know, seeing these kids having to experience their lives uh, in such conditions. Um, but going back, um, organizations such as the Rotary Club and many others like it um, that do so much for their own local communities, um, not just here locally but around the world, um, you know, they do this, these kinds of things every day. You know, they serve their communities and give back. Um, we did it for one deployment for 12 months, you know, but organizations such as yourselves, uh, you guys do it every day of your lives. So um, I know everyone says that I'm the hero, but uh, in some cases, you guys are the heroes of your own communities and local areas, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sergeant Daly, and thank you for being here. Just have a couple of announcements. I just want to thank everyone who participated in Career Day. We will wrap that up tomorrow. A special thank you to Amber Clark for coordinating that effort. And also, if you are interested in serving on the Inhuman Trafficking Now Committee, we're, gonna, we're starting that committee up again, and we are going to meet on July 13th, right after our Rotary meeting will be in the boardroom. Sadana uh, Daly is heading that up right here. If you have any questions or are interested, please let her know. And our next Rotary breakfast mix will be on Zoom. It'll be this Friday, and our guest speaker will be Carmen Overton. So I don't, you don't want to miss that. It'll be 8 o'clock. And remember that next week we will not be broadcasting, so if you are counting on a makeup next week online, you probably won't get that. So plan accordingly. And then lastly, this is the last week to take our pictures for the directory. So if you'll see Jim after the meeting, if you need a new picture. So joining me today at the head table is Carmen Overton, who brought us today's invocation. And now I'm excited to invite Stephanie Payne up here to introduce today's special program. Hello, I want to take a second and uh, make sure we welcome my fraternity sister, Cedricia Thomas. She is also here as a guest, and so I'm really glad to see you. So today's program is to present the 2022 Mary Reed Award. This award is given to a current living Rotarian within our club and is named after our very own beloved Mary Reed. Mary began her service to Rotary supporting her husband, Dan Reed, when he was president of this club in 1967 to 1968. Then she further supported him as he traveled as the 6900 district governor. And then she started serving our club direct directly as our executive secretary and so much more. I think almost all of us can remember a time when we might have had a little bit of anxiety showing up to Rotary if we owed her a makeup or two. Um, <clears throat> And her heart was given to membership, promoting fellowship, and helping encourage in attendance. Unfortunately for some of the newer members, we did lose Mary last year right after her 100th birthday, but we definitely sent her off with a lot of love and support, and she had a wonderful week of celebrations for her 100th birthday. The objective of the Mary Reed Award that we're giving out today is to honor the work of Mary Reed and to promote the ideal service and Rotary's motto of service above self. We do this through the annual recognition of an individual whose outstanding personal effort improves the quality of life of residents of the Columbus area and or enhances the program of Rotary. The recipient must demonstrate a dedicated personal effort exemplifying service above self over a sustained period of time in the area of public service. I think we can all agree that this year's recipient meets those criteria and much, much more. So now Ryan is going to play a video announcing this year's recipient. Thank you, Ryan. Hello, 
it was my great pleasure to nominate this year's winner of the Mary Reed Award. As president of our club during the COVID-19 pandemic, I was given an insider's perspective on the many modifications and cancellations that had to be made to programs that had been staples within District 6900 and, and Rotary Districts throughout the nation. This year's honoree is an infectiously wonderful person. Her personality is one where you know you're just going to be her friend from the instant you meet her. She has a wonderful smile, a great personality, is one of the most hardworking people I know. The winner of this year's award was determined not to let one of these long-standing programs be canceled and so she figured out a way to make an alternative solution uh, to get around the safety protocols necessary for the COVID-19 pandemic. The 2022 Mary Reed recipient is a woman who is kind and fierce. A woman who is passionate about children and about how we do education. A bold woman who wants to challenge the status quo of the establishment of how we've always done things to how we should do things and then go beyond. This year's honoree had the opportunity to really lean in to the pandemic, uh, to find new ways to be creative and innovative, uh, and to live the four-way test. This year's honoree um, had the opportunity to change the lives of people not just here in Columbus, but across the country. This year's honoree uh, deserves this award. This person is incredible, amazing, crazy in a good way. Um, this person has changed lives. Th this this person has saved lives. I mean, what she does is sh she, what she does is amazing. This person created from scratch a virtual learning experience for Ryla. This included creating personalized tubs that were packaged and delivered to Ryla participants. Uh, for their use in their respective homes to be incorporated throughout the, the retreat and virtual curriculum. Students were brought together in groups uh, for fellowship, albeit from the safety of their own respective homes. Uh, the experience was just as engaging as, as Ryla ever has been. This year's recipient is an amazing individual. This year's recipient has an infectious enthusiasm and personality that draws people in to not just interact with them, but to uh, assist and to get involved in what the individual is, is working on. This year's honoree for the Mary Reed Award is my mother, Bridget Markwood. Service Above Self is a foundation that Rotary and the Mary Reed Award are built on. The recipient of this award is also built on that same foundation. This person is futuristic, a creative genius, someone who is supportive of the youth. Um, and when I met her, I felt like it was almost as if we were leadership development kindred spirits. She was speaking my language, um, I was very much so in awe of the work that she was doing with the youth, and I'm so grateful that I had the opportunity to see her in action, uh, from Ryla, Oklahoma, to Ryla, Texas, and to even at Columbus State University. When it was determined in the spring of 2021 that District 6900 would once again have to cancel in-person Ryla, I reached out to this year's winner and asked if it would be possible for us to make the program available to District 6900 or at least students within our club. The recipient was, was more than happy to make the program available, so we were able to communicate with district leadership and make the program available not only to students in our community, but students in communities all across the district. This year's Mary Reed recipient has worked tirelessly over the course of years to change the lives of hundreds of children all across our nation. And when the COVID pandemic hit, she didn't quit. She didn't fall back and take some time off because things were difficult. Instead, she pushed through, revolutionized Ryla, and continues to change and save lives. I'm very proud to have worked with her on numerous educational projects 
uh, most notably the E3 conference, which quite literally challenges the way we learn. Uh, through our friendship and colleagueship, uh, we have uh, fussed, we have argued, and we have pushed each other uh, to be better at this thing we call education. And I'm proud to be her friend and colleague. She's been doing Ryla for, I think at this point, like almost half her life. And it started off very small and it slowly began to grow and grow. And then when the pandemic hit, they were, they were one of the only Rylas that continued. I've had the pleasure of working with this individual for 15 plus years on so many different projects. I myself would describe this individual as joyful. For those of you who are unfamiliar with RILA, the Rotary Youth Leadership Awards program, it is an international program uh, where uh, Rotary Clubs sponsor uh, individuals, uh, students uh, of various, a various ages to uh, learn about leadership, to learn about themselves, and to learn about Rotary and the four-way test. One of the opportunities that existed during the pandemic when the whole world shut down and when Rotaries stopped meeting and Rylas stopped meeting uh, was to reinvent how Ryla was delivered. Bridget and her team found a way to turn a five-day face-to-face retreat into a five-day virtual retreat complete with re retreat crates and tangibles uh, with the same types of of challenges that actually achieved the same types of learning outcomes. The results of her and her team's efforts not only changed the lives of the students who participated, it saved lives as well. Others may also use the words driven, action-oriented, a giant ball of never-ending energy, and passionate. I think one of the things that students enjoy most about Ryla is how engaging and entertaining it is. Because, I mean, sometimes you go to a camp or you go to a Zoom class and you like it for one day, but then the next day you're like, I kind of don't want to go back. I mean, for Ryla, I think pretty much every single person has come back for the second day on Zoom, which is incredible. Through their time in Rotary, this individual has worked with many different clubs on building Rotaract, Interact, um, and really the collaboration across multiple districts. This year's honoree deserves a lot of credit uh, for transforming RILA for not just Columbus, Georgia, uh, but for Texas, for California, for Oregon, for Tennessee. This nationwide network of Rotarians and now RILA alumni have come together to recreate this amazing program and make it available across the nation and potentially across the world. She's taught me like so many different lessons. I've grown up with Ryla and having that has helped me because I used to like struggle. I used to be shy. I used to not want to talk to people and I think she's one of the reasons why I like to now, I guess. And so when I think of Bridget Markwood, I think of a superhero. Um, I want to say congratulations. No one else in my mind deserves this but you. And I can't wait to see the work that you continue to do to impact this world. Bridget, you are more than deserving of this award. When I think of service, I cannot think of anybody more fitting to receive this award. The things that you've done for this community through your smile, through your humor, through your grace, through your talents, will never be forgotten. Your imprint on Chattahoochee Valley, and more particularly Columbus State University, will be felt for generations to come. Take your bow, girl. You've earned it. Congrats. Bridget, we congratulate you on winning the Mary Reed Award. There's certainly no one that is more deserving we're so happy to have you in our club and, and, and so happy to celebrate with you in this accomplishment. Thank you so much for everything that you do.
Bridget, I hope we have said enough good things about you. <laughs> I, I know that you deserve this so, so much. The committee unanimously agreed. And because of who you are, you will understand that we are continuing to have supply chain issues. So we have your award on order. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. But we have a certificate to present to you today, and we're going to let Jim take a picture, and then we'd love to hear your thoughts. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I, I don't even know what to say. I was not expecting this at all. I saw all the CSU people coming in, and I thought maybe, maybe Chris was getting this. Um, <laughs> But uh, I, am, I am overwhelmed. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Dreesy. Thank you to everyone who spoke. Um, thank you for all the support that you've given. Um, this has been uh, our, the RILA journey and the, the e-RILA journey and now RILA Plus, we're doing hybrid all over the, the country this year, um, has just been a phenomenal experience to be able to work with so many Rotarians. Um, if I needed rejuvenating and my rotary spirit, it certainly has done that. I'm not sure I needed extra, but I got it. Um, and uh, I am so, I'm so thrilled to be a part of this club and a part of this community. Uh, I have no idea what the, what the future is going to bring for um, whatever we, it is we're doing um, with, with the Chris and I, but also with, with what we're doing with Ryla and with the youth. But I know we don't want to stop. Um, I know I have no intention of stopping. I just want to keep growing and building and seeing what we can do to help the next generation be their best self. The pandemic has hit them hard, and it was uh, really enlightening to be able to spend. We got to work with almost 700 students across the country in 2021. Um, it was hard to hear some of their stories, some of the challenges they've been through. Uh, some of the struggles that they're continuing to go through that we're, we're with them this year on. Um, but uh, I'm so proud to be a Rotarian, and I'm so proud that we are there for them, and we're continuing to build programs like this together. So thank you so much from the, from the bottom of my heart. I mean, Mary Reed is like one of the most special people that has ever lived. I'm so honored uh, to have received this, and um, I'm just so grateful. Thanks, friends. I had a, a chance to briefly, when you started ERILA last July, Rob Bridget, we, when, we, when the program started, you, you asked me to just say a few words, and, and I had an opportunity to see the format and to see the kids, and they were so so pumped, weren't they? I mean, it was, you could feel the energy on the Zoom screen. And then your team, your team was amazing as well. And I, I know you have to have those types of people. I don't know where you found them, but they were really, really good. And so congratulations again. So a reminder that there will be a replay of today's program on Facebook as well as YouTube. And I would love to re-welcome all of our visiting Rotarians and guests and Staff Sergeant Daly. It's great to have you here and we welcome you. Also, you won't want to miss next week's program. We will have a health update from two of the specialists from Piedmont Columbus Regional. And don't forget to take your picture in the back with Jim. So until we meet again next week, let's continue to make a difference. Yeah, if you want to, I, she's going to be overwhelmed. So I have a meeting with Julie and Cedric, so I'm not going anywhere.